Hi everyone, thank you so very much for joining me on this CareCollab update of Cattleya Maxima. In my case, it's going to be an update because there is a care collab that went on prior. The beauty about this is that I have Patricia's orchids joining me, Orchidea, Stephen Van Camp and Lewis, and plants and other things as well. For me, this is an update seeing as I did a care collab previously. I will link that video in the description below. But I reached out to everybody because of the update potential with these care collabs and mine was coming into bloom. Thank you so much for allowing me to do this Care Collab update together with you, simply because mine is in bloom. I really very much appreciate the fact that you took the time in the fact that I can show my blooms and talk a little bit about what has happened since we filmed Maxima the last time. Well, here comes the sun washing out the colors. I was hoping for that one cloud to stay. <laughs> can't win, can't win. Anyway, as you can see, since the last Care Collab, the sheaths have bloomed out. I was not expecting a blooming this time around because I did repot this Maxima last year while she was in sheath. So I wasn't entirely sure whether she was going to just say, nah, I'm gonna just chill out and uh, establish myself newly into the pot and I won't bloom. But here we are, a very unusual blooming for me, especially this time of year being April. I find that strange, but then again, yeah, I did repot her, so maybe it took her some time to see that she has the capacity to bloom after all. I normally get a blooming out of my Maxima end of September, early October. And then I have about a four week period for the blooms to last, especially because the temperatures aren't as hot. So I skipped out all of 2020. Um, while the new growths were growing, I was quite surprised that it didn't actually manifest itself into blooms again at the end of September, beginning of October. Anyway, it had to be done. I had to repot her. Despite the sheath, new roots were growing and the pot was getting a little bit crowded. And after two and some years, in the pot, I go in and clean up, even though I grow in LECA and self-watering. But I prefer to make sure that the root ball is healthy and hopefully determining that way that the orchid will stay healthy. But here we are, April and bloom. So really happy to be able to do this update with her in bloom. There are some observations though that I see this time around. And I could bring that down to the fact that I did repot her while she was in sheath. First of all, the presentation of the blooms is much more stunted. So I'm going to get around to the other things that you see here. I used to, in my past bloomings, have long spikes reaching right up to here, and then the blooms would spread out and present themselves pretty much as an individual bloom perfectly without crowding the way you see it right now. This is a crowded display. So I'm going to boil that down to the fact that it is because of the repot while in sheath. Too much going on and well, for me again, repots have to happen when the roots are growing and I have to consider the overall health of the orchid as opposed to I want her to bloom and then repot and a little bit too late plus heading into winter. Not so good. But you can see that um, at least this time, I have one, two, three, four blooms on this spike. And I had four blooms on this spike as well, but also quite crowded. So normally, again, the spike would be to here and then the blooms open up and present themselves. So this is like a stunted spike. And what I noticed, and I was going to do this on camera, is that this bloom here is still stuck in the sheath. So this is a very, seems to be a common trait for this type of time of blooming. You can see that the sheath has restricted the spike itself. Now, I don't know if this bloom is going to amount to anything, but still, the potential of the orchid is such that finally she's actually becoming mature enough to be able to give me four blooms per spike 
as opposed to the three and the two that I've had in prior years. Having said that, quick update as well. I think one of the pollination processes has worked. Clearly, this is crossed with self. It has collapsed. And this was a week or maybe, no, maybe 10 days ago that I pollinated this bloom. And I have to say I'm super pleased. So we have a quick update on the seed pod here. And what is going on here? Here's another bloom that has collapsed. I didn't pollinate this one. So I wonder if this was natural pollination or if there is another issue going on with this bloom. Remains to be seen? No, it doesn't look. I have a caterpillar in here. Who are you? I don't care who you are, you're not going to be in there. Now, I am wondering if, based on the activity in this flower, it has not pollinated itself as well. So I'm not going to actually do anything I'm not going to remove the bloom, but it looks like it possibly could fail because you can see the difference between the ovary section from this one as opposed to this one here, which is still green. Still looking good. And this one isn't. So I wonder if that little thing, caterpillar thing, whatever, probably a moth, not only just did it chew it up, it pollinated it, but it destroyed the possibility of creating a seed pod. I won't know, I'm gonna leave it on now that the caterpillar has been dealt with and we'll take it from there and see what happens to this side of the bloom. I'm happy that I do not have any more pests on this orchid. I have been having ant issues and that was why my Im immediate assumption was ants. But I could also see here, there was a petal or a sepal that was bruised and has black spots on it. And that is symbolic of ant eggs. This year, the ants have been absolutely crazy going over all my blooms and buds, taking, laying their eggs and it just leaves a nasty mess. I don't mind some, but it's been a little bit more excessive this year than before. Ooh, there's the cloud again. But yeah, I wanted to share my blooms with you. I wanted to update you on the fact that maybe this year I will get two bloom cycles. It could be, because when this one finishes blooming, the new growths will start immediately and there's plenty of time until September, October to get a second blooming this year. Another thing that hasn't happened is that she did not get rooted in throughout the course of the winter. So there's still a bit of a wobble going on in the pot that I'm not too happy about. But for the rest of the growing season with the new growths, I will get new roots. But I don't see any stress on the orchid regarding the desiccation of the bulbs. This one started to desiccate after the repot, but it stopped. It never continued to desiccate but the ones that are in bloom are not desiccating. And the ones in the back have lost two leaves. So the energy of the orchid is being pulled forward to where the blooms are, which is great because at the end of the day, I want a healthy front part of the orchid. And then we shall see what happens in the course of the year, whether I can reduce the size of the pot by taking the back part off and seeing as well if it is worth trying to propagate that as a division. But yeah, oh, her fragrance is superb. A little bit strange on the presentation. It's a color pop in my blooming alley, needless to say, and regardless of that, she has her fragrance. The beautiful, beautiful rose fragrance, classic rose. When you think of an elegant rose, that has that fragrance where you just, you know, you close your eyes and you drift away. That is her fragrance. I love, love, love 
the fragrance of this orchid. It is intense, but not so intense that you have to recoil and you can't take it all in. But I have to say I'm super grateful to the channels that have decided to give me the moment of being able to do an update together with everybody and show my blooms, despite the fact that this year the presentation isn't as spectacular as it was last year. But still, she did make it through the repot, and for that I am super grateful. I have another two weeks or so of these blooms to enjoy, even if they're not perfect. They smell so good. <laughs> so thank you very much to Patricia's Orchids, Orchidea, Stephen Van Camp and Lewis, and plants and other things for humoring me, for taking the time to do your videos. Links of those videos will be in my description with additional information regarding how theirs are doing, updates and care. Thank you everybody so very, very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Have yourselves a wonderful day and stay safe, please. Take care, bye. Mm -hmm.